Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Alternates, a basketball show for the others. We've got a really good show for you today. We're going to be picking a headliner. We're going to be asking the basketball gods for something today. Uh, we're going to be playing three pack, which is a fun game. I'm super yep. excited to get into a little trivia for you. It's going to be very apt today. It's okay. a fun one. It's oh, a yeah, fun I'm one. I'm excited. Uh, and we're also going to be trying to win some money in Bet Brains, which is a gambling segment that uh, Clayton, you came up with. And yeah, so we're going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm excited to lose it all, man. Let's go for it. <laughs> let's, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go for broke. I'm, I'm leveraging the family's future today. <laughs> all uh, right, we've got see. all of that and more coming up right after this. This track is Shades of Grey by Toxic Effects. It is off the Adventures of Nobby Porthole, the Cock of the North LP Ooh, that was wow. released on 1UP Records in 1991. Uh, before we get into it, i got to say, this is one of my favorite songs of all time early 90s kind of peace punk stuff mm -hmm. uh my favorite thing about this song is that it, you notice in punk there's a lot of like calling out things that you don't like about the world and society what they do in this song is they point the fingers at themselves and they take ownership over their uh role i guess you would say yeah in the things that they don't like which is something i, I feel is very rare so I, I really appreciate it so let's get into it all right What is up, everyone? Thank you for joining us on episode two. Here we are. Of the alternates. Everybody that watched episode one, we really appreciate it. If you haven't checked it out yet, go back. We, uh, we've we got some weekly games in there. We got the duo yep. jam, so I'm keeping track on that. Not doing well so far, I'll say. No. Not doing well at all. <laughs> it's not looking good for me in the Battle of LA. Uh, but 
we, we really appreciate all the support that we've gotten so far through the first episode. Yeah. I, of course, am your host, Brian Cullen. I'm an NBA credentialed media person. I'm your co-host. I'm Clayton Stevens. Uh, I play guitar in the band's Touche Amore and Entry, and uh, really excited to keep moving on this journey and you know, yeah. Keep building, yeah we're building Having something a lot of fun yeah, yeah we're building something here so this is exciting uh you can get in contact with us by emailing us at the alternate hoop at gmail.com you can hit us up in the comment section if you're watching this on youtube uh, or you could hit us up on our socials uh, i'm on instagram and twitter at brian s cullen clayton your instagram and twitter too right yeah same same on both uh at clayton underscore stevens perfect awesome uh and then just real quick want to ask everybody if you haven't done so yet subscribe to the show on YouTube, like the episode, subscribe if you're listening to the podcast, audio only, whatever platform you're on, just hit that subscribe button, stay up to date, and then leave us a rating and review if that is an option on your preferred podcast platform because that really, really helps us out. Let's get to 100 subscribers. That's my goal. Let's get to 100 right now. So if you haven't done so, do it. Send it to whoever. Send it to your mom and dad. Let's get some mom and dad subscribers. Let's get let's, some moms and dads. Let's reach let's the make parents. It paternal. Yeah, yeah, let's reach some parents. So help us out this week by doing that. With that said, how are you, man? I'm well. Yeah, you know what? Uh, on my way over here, well, before I came over here uh, to record today, uh-huh. I watched the Turnstile NPR Tiny Desk concert, Ooh, which okay. came out the other day. Uh, a lot of people have seen it, turns out, uh, had like, 200,000 views on it already. Wow. In like a day or two. They're catching up to the alternates. They're, That's good. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah, they're <laughs> going to catch us soon. Um, and no, I just wanted to kind of talk about how awesome it was. Like, it's a yeah. really great performance. They play a bunch of stuff from uh, their last record, Glow On, that came out last mm-hmm. year. They do interesting alternative versions. And just to see a band that comes from this world. Yeah. Right? Like punk and hardcore. Um, Getting to be on a platform that doesn't normally showcase that type of music, maybe exposing some people to uh, some really interesting stuff. So I just wanted to, before we get into everything today, talk about Turnstile a little bit and say how awesome I thought that was. And if you haven't seen it, I highly suggest checking it out. And anyone out there, please go check it out. I think you'll be impressed. I have not watched it yet. Yeah. Turnstile is so good. It makes sense to me, though, because Turnstile is maybe the most accessible hardcore band i've heard in a long time like yeah. they they it's it they're very clearly a hardcore band but they do it in a way that i think is accessible to people that aren't necessarily part of the world right. or have but with but with authenticity exactly I think it comes across so much exactly in, in what they do it's so. not manufactured yeah at all um so that makes sense i gotta check it out tiny dust is great one of the, yeah no totally it like now that you're saying this, I'm thinking about the stepping stones into it. And they had, uh, I think it was a couple years ago now, Idols on there, which is like a hardcore right. yeah, kind yeah. of stepping stone. Yeah, adjacent for there's, sure. There's a lot, they have a lot of influence from like crass almost mm-hmm. in a lot of the stuff that they do. Kind of right. even you know, like the Jesus Lizard or something like that. Exactly. You hear that type of stuff exactly. Yeah. So like that's, the, that was like NPR. That was their stepping stone. Right. In the Dipping hardcore. their toes in. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Just a little bit. I got to check it out. Yeah. Turnstile's amazing. That band's so good. In fact, one of the only concerts I've been to in the last year, I went to go see Idols when they were here in L.A. And whoever the house DJ guy was, he played nothing but Turnstile <laughs> the entire time yeah. the band wasn't on stage, which was I think sick. we're going to be seeing that for many years to come, yeah. uh, a lot of people. So shout out to Turnstile. That started off my day really nicely. All right. Well, let's start out everybody's day with headliners. Yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's get, get into, into what's it. going on. So uh, we've got a few headlines here. I'm going to throw them at you. I want you to pick one that we're going to focus on, okay? Yeah, let's do it. So Dirk's jersey retirement. The Mavs the played man. at home, yes. and they retired number 41 in the rafters. In the rafters. Dirk the legend. So he got his officially retired number in Dallas. Mm-hmm. Second appearance for this guy on Headliners. Kevin Porter Jr. hits the game-winning shot, and it was his first game after his suspension right yeah his team mandated suspension after he walked out during the half (laughs) yes he left he came back and hit a game winner incredible again we said this in the last episode this is going to be one of many with this name in the headlines Kyrie Irving returns to the NBA Kyrie Irving made his season debut with Brooklyn and he scored 22 points in a in a win against Indiana yeah had a nice game Mm -hmm. Zion Williamson Uh uh-oh in the headlines Uh uh-oh as he rehabs his fractured foot away from the team i believe he's in portland he's in portland i I, I saw 
I tried to get some more information on that. I, I couldn't find much else besides Portland, which I know Nike's in Portland. Yeah. He's a Jordan brand guy. Yeah. Maybe that's part of what's going on, but not good. Yeah, not good. Nike was like, you exploded out of one of our shoes in college, so yeah. we kind of owe this <laughs> to right. you. Why that's don't right. you come yeah. to Portland and we'll take care of you? Uh, any one of those standing out to you that you want to jump into? Definitely. Um, these are some really interesting headlines, like we said, some people that are coming up over and over again. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to get into those guys okay. more as the season goes along, including Kyrie, like we said, um, Kevin Porter Jr. We just got to keep an eye on this. Like, this is two episodes in a row. His shot it, shouldn't be the headline. It it's, be, there's a lot going on with Kevin Porter Jr. right now. No, but um, it's what was said when he took the shot that should be the headline. Yes, and we've heard that the the commentator who made the unfortunate uh, <laughs> trigger comment about him says it was an accident. I, I guess we'll take him at his word for that for now. It's, yeah. an, it's an unfortunate one. I kind of don't want to touch it. Yeah. It's so awful. Fair. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So I want to go to the, the nice story here, which is, Dirk Nowitzki. Okay. All and right. his number being retired by the Dallas Mavericks. Okay. I, I was almost thinking you were going to go Kyrie there, and I was going to stop you and say, yeah, Kyrie put up 22. Lance Stevenson put up 20 in the first quarter in that game. But. You actually stole the show there a little <laughs> bit um, with the guitar and everything. So uh, Lance, I think, will be getting covered soon. It looks like there might be a contract situation coming up with him. Huge so. news for And One Shoes, who yeah. uh, was his sponsor when he was in the NBA I, I didn't remember that. that he's the most uh, And One player yeah. Ever. So that makes sense. I, I only know that because I think it was when he was on the Clippers when he signed that deal. Oh, my God. A video came out of the team either on a plane or a bus, and the entire team was making fun of his shoes. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> All right. So let's get to the positives here. Dirk. Yes. Dirk. W- what I'm happy about here is that I feel like Dirk's getting a little love. He's getting some flowers. Mm-hmm. People are letting him know how great he is. And I just want to make sure that we're doing the same yeah. and that fans in general are talking about just how great this guy was mm-hmm. and um, how much he changed the game of basketball by being uh, the first real stretch big. Yeah. Um, German you know, Jesus. Right. Like we, we look back on like the Warriors and creating the small ball. And really, I feel like that was born out of the Miami Heat, right? The, right. the Chris Bosch at the five yeah. playing a small ball, spreading the court, the Spurs spreading the court. Mm-hmm. But that came out of Dirk's Mavs yeah. and the inability for, you know, LeBron to deal with and LeBron and, and, and the Cavs in general and the heat um, to deal with the way he was stretching the floor mm-hmm. um, and just what a matchup nightmare this guy was. And if you look around the league, you know, KD, uh, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, um, LeBron James, like, there's an endless number of guys who have taken the signature Dirk step back move. And it's now just, it's just a regular, it's just a shot we all consider a good shot now. Right, right. Um, and then it was absolutely revolutionary. Nobody at that size could ever shoot like that. And that's what we're looking for in the NBA now. And I'm just so happy that uh, the Mavs did the right thing here. They built a statue for him outside. Mm-hmm. They honoring him in, in the right way. Um, a fan favorite, obviously. He's on the court Dallas. at every game. His, yeah, like, his shadow is literally on the floor at so every game. So I'm just so, this is just a story that just makes me happy. Yeah. That, He's one of those guys, It's th- there's a lot of greats that have come in and out of the league and w- w- with widely varying opinions on them. I feel like Dirk is one of the guys that everybody's kind of like, yeah, I love Dirk. He's one mm-hmm. of the greats. It's, it's hard to like truly think of maybe outside some heat fans from those years that really hate Dirk Nowitzki. He's one of those just extremely yeah. likable greats, right? Like, Played with one team for 20 years. Yeah. And, and so, so that championship, the, the one championship that he got is one of the most, in my opinion, top tier championships of all time, because mm-hmm. it was just this year after year, chipping away at it, trying to get to the top of that mountain and coming up short and, not dipping, but him just saying, no, I'm going to keep going forward. Now, that's not a knock. I'm all, I'm pro player empowerment. Mm-hmm. I'm all for players taking their own destiny in their own hands. But I love to see how he did it. And It's, and spe- the, it's special. It's different. And he only played with, he only had one teammate his entire career that made an all-NBA 
uh, ranking while he was playing with them. And that was Steve Nash. It's the only guy he played with that made an all NBA team. Right. And that, and that's early. That's before yeah. the championship. Yeah. Or the championship. Uh, yeah. that, you know, so that, that's really interesting. Yeah. Uh, a, a team full of role players. Really. Yeah. It's, it's him, him and role players. Exactly. Um, just, just an amazing guy. And, and like I said, like the league wouldn't be what it is right now for sure without Dirk. And as much as, you know, I think he's properly rated in many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, we look at him as one of the best power forwards, one of the best shooting big men ever. Um, But I think what could be said that isn't said enough is that on a night to night basis, he's capable of being the best player. He was capable of being the best player in the NBA Mm -hmm. and he could go against anybody against any of these all time greats. And on a given night, he could be as good or better than a guy like Tim Duncan. Yeah. So skilled. Um, He did everything. So, you know, he, he's one of the best players to ever play this game period. Yeah. Um, And like I said, on a night to night basis, he could have been one of the five best players to ever play this game. Absolutely. Um, In a lot of ways, kind of underrated as a player criminal like he that's what i mean is like he's properly rated in many ways for his position yeah. but on a night-to-night basis mm-hmm. i really believe he had the skill um to be as good as any player that we put in the top five of all time yeah really yeah his his stamp on the game is is huge he completely Undeniable. yeah completely changed the way it was played and also just being that good as a foreign-born player opened up a lot more too you know yeah we didn't even get into that europe was still a pretty untapped market in terms of uh grabbing players for the nba Mm -hmm. and he opened that up you know there were guys before him obviously hakeem who he passed uh on on the all time he's i think he's the he's got the most points of any foreign uh, foreign born player in the nba um but yeah it was still fairly untapped at the time extremely yeah and i feel like his influence opened that up a little more and and teams started to look at the european market of players and and bringing more guys in so yeah his influence goes beyond what we just see on the yeah exactly i I love that you bring that up because yeah his influence goes beyond just the game Yeah, yeah absolutely shout out dirk shout out dirk and the name dirk is just great and his his terrible late 90s early 2000s big nba suits that are just <laughs> so good and with baggy. the middle part and the small oh, earrings oh such a good look ah oh, we love such Dirk. a good look all right i appreciate you picking that one a little positivity to start us a little out. positivity why not it's uh, been a rough rough week for a lot of people i think well you brought the positivity and i think that you deserve something for that i think you deserve to ask for one of your wants so we're going to ask the basketball gods for something. Now, we believe in the basketball gods here. Yes. I just yeah, this is not an atheist basketball it's, show. This is I'm not hoop atheist. Yeah, I'm not hoop atheist. I exactly. might be an atheist in other aspects of my life. The basketball gods are 100% real. I I couldn't believe in them more. Yeah, 100 I I mean, I got to say as someone who grew up a Clippers fan, who covers the Clippers, mm-hmm. I I think it's undeniable their presence. You've seen the rap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah like, the, I've clip, s- the Clippers have been dealing with that old school, uh, you know, uh, Old Testament God for, yeah. for some time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The you drown know? the world basketball God. Yeah, yeah. They has- had a tough God <laughs> that they were uh, speaking to basketball-wise. So, yeah, let's let's ask the gods for some stuff. Yeah. And let's, let's pray on it, and let's hope that they deliver <laughs> us uh, some nice stuff. So what I'm asking for the basketball gods for. Yeah. I want the basketball gods to let the Charlotte Hornets trade for a big man before this deadline is over. Okay. And the reason I say the Charlotte Hornets is because there's this mass of teams in the Eastern Conference that I think any team in that mass, mm-hmm. including you know the Raptors, the Hornets, et cetera, um, I think there's room for a team there to vault themselves into the middle of the playoff picture Okay. And cement themselves as a playoff team. And what I like about the Hornets here is that they're a young team, but you know they do have Gordon Hayward, they do have uh, Rozier, they have you know veterans around. This is not uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is not the Houston Rockets. Yeah. Um, I think this team could use some winning, a playoff berth. I just think that would be awesome. And, and I think what's holding them back is their defense. Is- and. Um, the only way they're going to fix that is to get a competent big man in the center. You, do you have a name in mind? 
obviously you the, know, god, the gods want details the Clayton. gods want details <laughs> i know and it's like i don't want to be too specific right like my dream is like get miles turner get miles turner just go get him <laughs> make it happen trade pj washington that whatever you got to do to go get him go get him but you know i don't want to be too specific because i'm open to the idea that there's a big man out there who's being undervalued that we're not seeing that which can provide competency i'm not looking for an all nba level center i'm looking for competent play down low and i think that alone you know can they get a player in who isn't going to cost them too much too much of their future that will help them defensively get better solidify them as a playoff team get Lamelo ball in the playoffs okay miles bridges and i think like miles bridges has proven that he's a stretch player and he can play the four um, I don't think he's a five going forward. So I right. think he can pair with, this isn't a name they could get, but let's say a Clint Capella type, right? Like last year you bring in That's a, a borderline star. That, it is, right? Okay, so that, that might be even shooting out. Uh, for the Clippers, Ivica Zubats. Okay. Right, like that level of competency in the middle. Um, could they get Nurkic? You know, I know yeah. Nurkic isn't the best defensive center anymore, but I think he would provide so much more than what they have right now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm asking the basketball guards for. It's like, give the Hornets a couple more competent <laughs> pieces um, to get them right up into the middle there and that's fair. Uh, cement them. So you want you want like a Cody Zeller type on on the Hornets <laughs> is what I'm hearing. I couldn't right. even, that would be so scary. Could you imagine that if he played for the Hornets? Well, he, he certainly uh, has had a little time there. And I like Cody Zeller. I'm not going to lie. I, I, I love Cody I, Zeller. I get, I get the joke. I uh, I, I get it. Um, but <laughs> Good. I'm glad it landed. No. no. <laughs> it landed. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know who that guy is. Like I said, my dream is Miles Turner. Okay. I would love to see Miles Turner there. I think he's an incredible fit there. And like, he's still young enough to, be part of the future there yeah so i love that name um but that that's what i'm asking for okay what about you that's it's a very humble ask i like that it's yeah. good and make I, a trade the hornets are so fun let's <laughs> let's take them from just being fun to being fun and really good yeah so i'm all in on that i'm all in i like come that. on mitch Kupchak. all right so i'm asking the basketball gods this was tough i'll be honest this was tough when when i was sitting down figuring out what i wanted to ask the basketball gods I came up with a few things. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a very wanting person, mm. okay? So this was my thought process. After that Nets game against the Pacers, seeing how much fun it was to see Lance Stevenson playing the guitar, doing all of that, I, I was going to ask for Lance to stay in the league, mm -hmm. just not on the Pacers, because I kind of want him on a – I was thinking, oh, it'd be fun to get him on a contender, you know, so that there's oh. there's a little bit of showmanship and, mm -hmm. and just kind of absurdity on a team that's going to get a lot of coverage. But then I remembered Stance, Lance Stevenson is a very problematic person with a pretty brutal past. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. I can't get – for multiple reasons, can't do it. Yep. And I think that the basketball gods understand that. The next one I was thinking, maybe let me start this one a little selfless, okay? Because okay. Th th this was my, you know, let, let me show them that I'm, th let me show the gods I'm, th I'm thinking about more than just myself. So I was, I thought maybe I'll ask them for the bubble back. Let me get the NBA bubble back oh, no. with oh, all the no. health and safety protocols that are happening right now. Players, so many players are going out, coaches getting COVID, um, you know, the other night, as, as you know, I, I covered the Clippers uh, before the game. Uh, Brian Shaw was asked about looking forward to, to some games coming up and, and how they were getting ready for that. Mm -hmm. And he's interim head coach right now because Ty Lue has COVID. And he basically said, we're taking it one day at a time because we have no idea what players or coaches are going to be available yeah. for us, which was an you know insane thing to hear. Normalized now, if you heard that two years ago, you would have been like, what do you mean? So... I thought about that and you know if it's not for the safety of the players at least just consider my fantasy season mm. to bring the bubble back that's really what it is yeah. and then I realized you're not really being selfish you're selfless you're a real selfish piece of shit <laughs> and it's coming through right now yeah if we're talking for fantasy I'd love to get these players in a bubble <laughs> yeah. and get my lineup rocking get me the fantasy bubble yeah that's all I'm asking <laughs> so I couldn't do that I couldn't do that so I landed on one that I thought was fun okay and as we know, the basketball gods are vengeful. They're not necessarily the kindest gods. They they have, mm -hmm. as we said, some major wrath. Yeah. 
So I was like, let me lean into that. Let me get something they might actually be into, you know, acquiescing for me. So I'm asking for the nets to get into what I'm calling a vaccine bracket. Uh oh. Okay. So as we said, Kyrie Irving is back, right? Mm -hmm. He's still unvaccinated. Yep. Which means he can't play home games. He can't play any games against the Knicks at the Knicks because it's yep. still in New York. And he can't play any games against the Warriors on the road. Well, at home. Either way, he can't play the Warriors, yeah, right? He can't play in San Francisco and he can't play in New York City. Yeah. So I want the Nets to land. If he's not going to get vaccinated just for fun, let's put them in a bracket where they, they play the Knicks. For an entire series, Ooh. you're removing their star point guard. Wow. And then if they can advance from that, and let's say the Nets get to the finals, have them play the Warriors. And it mm. just completely removes them from that. Because right now, the big story is Kyrie Irving's back. He's, he's playing some games. But I don't think it's really been discussed <laughs> what that might look like in the playoffs if he doesn't get vaccinated. So very interesting. Very basketball interesting. gods, please, in your most vengeful way, because we all know that you're capable of doing it and how much joy it brings you mm -hmm. to just bring chaos. Let's put the nets in the vaccine bracket. Wow. Um, there's a lot of angles this could go. Like you're saying, like, you know, they could end up in a, this one's a little tough to, to come up with, but maybe they could end up in a four or five matchup with the Knicks, right? First yeah. round, you know, then it does give them the advantage. I will say moving forward of being the away team, if they were to advance past that, right? right? Like, so then they get to face the bucks and have four out of seven in Milwaukee and, uh, you know, the whoever the, the, these other teams might be that right. they would be playing going forward. So there's a situation which the one seed might be their worst vaccine bracket yeah. because they have the most games at home. <laughs> yeah. And so we don't know which way this vaccine bracket's going to go, but we're just hoping for a vaccine bracket. That's right? what I'm asking like, for. Right? Yeah. Like it, it might be the one seed. It might be the five seed. We don't know. Basketball gods, you work out your voodoo and get us there. Yeah. But that's what we're hoping and for. And here's the other chaos angle to that is... The Nets, obviously, are going to have to think about that. Oh, yeah. Like, seriously, at some point, they're going to have to think about, avail you know, Kyrie's availability come playoff time because of these these protocols uh, and mandates in, in certain cities. And they might start throwing games at the end of the, the season to get out of what, you know. I, I think it's very possible that they could try and get down to like I said, around the four or five right. and hope to be essentially an away team as much as possible. But we've seen the basketball gods punish teams oh, for doing they that. they do not like when you do that. Yeah, the, the basketball, basketball gods, gods do hate not when like you throw when you seeding. do that. Yep. So it's just a double, like let's, it's the most chaotic season I can remember in, I don't know, maybe the last decade. Mm -hmm. So let's just make it a little more chaotic. I just think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that. All right. Well, those watching on YouTube, hit us up in the comment section and let us know what you're asking of the basketball gods yes. right now. I want to know what, what people at home are asking the basketball gods for. All right. Let's get into some more chaos. I'm just go I'm leaning chaos this week. Let's get chaotic. Let's play three pack. Love it. So three pack is a game that we came up with. And it's essentially two truths and a lie yeah. is what the game. I can't really say it's, we it's came up with It's the bar with, game, two yeah. truths and a lie. Yeah. yeah, we came up with it, but it's the bar game, two truths yeah. and a lie. We named it. So how we're going to do this is I'm going to throw three facts at you, and you have to tell me which one of those is a lie. Okay. All right? So those drinking at home right now, go ahead and play along, get yeah. drunk with us. Yeah. Okay. We talked about them at the top of the show. I'm going to stay on topic. Okay. This week's three pack is about Dirk Nowitzki. Wow. Okay. So after I'm his retirement curious. ceremony, you know, I, I knew obviously the basketball Dirk, but I dove a little deeper. I wanted to know a little more about the legend that was getting retired. So mm -hmm. here's three facts. Tell me which one is the lie. Okay. Fact number one, he was given the name Bavarian Cream. Oh by teammates because of his German heritage, smooth jump shot, and obviously his white skin. Uh huh. He has only recorded two career triple doubles in his 21 years playing in the NBA. That's 1,681 games, counting the playoffs and all-star appearances. Wow. Fact number three, he loves to play the saxophone. 
Oh my goodness. Which he started playing due to his personal coach, Holger Gershwinder, forcing him to not only dribble to the rhythm of a live saxophone player during practice, but also made him learn how to play it when they were done with basketball drills. Wow. Okay. So I'm going to work my way up here. Yeah, let's hear it. Starting with the last one with the saxophone. Can you say the name of his trainer again? Holger Gershwinder. So I remember his trainer from his last game in the NBA. I don't know if you remember this. He was at his last game. Yeah. Uh, he was crying his eyes out. Mm-hmm. He found Dirk in, I believe, Bavaria, mm-hmm. definitely in Germany, uh, and trained him. And, you know, he was his guy. It's so odd, but I like that. I think that one's real. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to set that one off to the side. Okay. Um, he did things in a different way than most people. I, I think that that trainer, it makes sense. There's something odd about it, but I like it. All right. All right. The second one was, is it two career triple doubles? He said in over a thousand career games, including the playoffs. Over fifteen hundred career games, counting playoffs and All Star appearances. I mean, unquestionably, he averaged a double double. Okay. Right, like he averaged ten rebounds. I'm sure many years, and certainly over ten points a game every year of his career. Did he? ever get 10 assists that i can think of in my head it's it's it was a rarity um so if he had more than two i don't think it was a lot more okay so i'm gonna keep that one i'm i'm thinking about that one for okay. a second all right and then the first one what was the first one again was was given the nickname bavarian, uh, bavarian cream. cream yes okay i smell bullshit okay on this one okay um it's an easy nickname that you could have come up with looking at where he was from. Okay. And so I'm going to say that he played the saxophone. All right. (laughs) And that he only had two triple doubles in a thousand games. Okay. And Bavarian cream is a lie. Is a lie. You nailed it. Bavarian cream is, I made that up. Um, I had to look up how to spell Bavarian. I'm not going to lie. He is from Bavaria, right? He's from the Bavarian part of Germany. I think, I think that may be true. He's from like Eastern Germany. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I believe Bavaria is like the South. Yeah. So I got to say when I was, when I was putting this together and researching the, he does play the saxophone. Um, I went down, so I was going down the Dirk rabbit hole. Yeah. And then I found a whole other rabbit hole in there, which was the Holger Gershwinder rabbit hole. See, I knew that there was stuff to this guy that he was an oddity. Wild. Okay. So he, he has a basketball training camp in Mm -hmm. Germany for young players could you even just guess what the name of his basketball facility is called? What his the German training? Basketball Academy. No, which, which would be extremely German to name it that. <laughs> it would, right? Yeah. It's called the Institute of Applied Nonsense is the name of his basketball academy. And his whole thing is he teaches basketball players not basketball. So they have to – he, he did this with Dirk. They've got to read books on physics – they, they take dance courses. They all learn how to dance. They have to learn instruments. They they go through like art appreciation courses. As if I couldn't love Dirk anymore. <laughs> yeah. This is incredible. Yeah. I love this. He So I even read with Dirk specifically, because Dirk had that signature. It's not just the Nia, but the very high arcing shot, right? It had yeah. that huge, it would go up Over so Over the top of anybody. Dropped. Exactly. He designed that not only by reading through physics, but he got a... A program from NASA that they used for jet propulsion and rocket trajectory. And he took all of Dirk's measurements, took all of his, you know, biometrics and all that. And he basically put it in this program and designed the perfect shot. And that's how Dirk learned how to do it. Is he, he, they used NASA technology and then applied it to Dirk, which is, the most german yes, thing i've yes, ever yes. heard it's so applied science <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. like it's so applied nonsense yeah some applied might say. nonsense yeah <laughs> but but in this case there there was a little bit of something to it and that's just amazing and just makes me love dirk even more and the, the relationship with the trainer it makes all of it yeah. even cooler so th- this was a really fun three pack um i really really want to make a patronage the Institute of Applied Nonsense. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out how to get that in something. This is a yeah. bucket list item now. Yeah. Um, all right. Wow, you nailed it. 
I thought I was going to get I, you. I, I, I'm surprised I got it. I'm He's got lie. some good nicknames, too. Uh, let me see if I can pull these up. Do you know any Dirk nicknames? Dirk nicknames? I don't know that I do. I said one in the beginning. I know there's one I'm missing that's so obvious, but what what is it? All right, so this is what Basketball Reference has him down as. <laughs> this might be my favorite. Basketball Reference is always insane with these. This might be my favorite. Dirty. Just dirty. Just I dirty. I love that. I <laughs> love that. Dirty. Uh, dirty Dirk. Tall baller from the G, which you could only get away with back then because now it sounds like he's just a really tall dude in the development league. Right. All right. German race car. One of his other listed nicknames. And then, and as skilled as he is, I would never have called him a race car. <laughs> let me tell you. As skilled as he was. And then my personal favorite, which I threw out in the beginning, German Jesus. German Jesus. I have heard that one. Yeah. I remember that. That's yeah. a great one. That's a great one. All right. Let's get into bet brains. Okay. So in this segment, I'm going to throw a couple bets that come from the Casino of Clayton. This is just from my own brain. The Casino of Clayton. That's I right. love that. I love That's that. right. This just came out of my brain. <laughs> I looked at the schedule and I came up with some bets. Okay. So I'm going to be asking a bunch of questions here. Yeah. I enjoy gambling, mm-hmm. but I'm like, get me on a craps table. I'm that yeah. guy. I enjoy. Yeah. We're going we're gonna to make this super simple. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a hundred alternates dollars. They're okay. just as good as USD. Okay. It's, you get a hundred dollars. Just as real. It's just as real. (laughs) You get 100 alternates dollars, and you get to spend it on three bets. Okay. All three bets are positive bets. Now, what that means is that you're winning more than you put in. Okay. Right? So I like uh, it so far. The first bet, it's going to be plus 150. That means you put in $100, you're going to win 150. Okay. All right. So So this is all based off of a $100 scale. Yeah. So this this is what's called the American system, um, is the plus minus. I was a... uh... A, a swift transition from Germany to America. Yes. I'm, I'm going through culture shock right now. Yeah, we, we can use the uh, European decimal system another time uh, <laughs> can, for gambling. Can I still wear my Lederhosen? Uh, anytime. All right, perfect. Anytime. Okay, so I'm going to throw these three bets at you. Okay. And you're going to split up that $100 of those three bets. And All we're right. going to come back next week, and we're going to see how you did on those bets, how far up or down you are in alternate All right, let's make some. All right. Let's make some money. Okay, so the first one... We have the Atlanta Hawks mm-hmm. who are playing in LA this weekend. Yeah. They have a game versus the Lakers Friday night. Okay. They have a game versus the Clippers Sunday night. Okay. In that in those two games, mm-hmm. the Hawks need to hit over 26 and a half three pointers made. Combined. So, over the two games, okay. they need to hit 27 or more three pointers essentially. Okay. 26 won't be enough. 26 and a half. So they need to hit 27 three-pointers. All right. That's going to give you plus 150 odds. Okay. Okay, because that's it, it's around where they shoot. I'll tell you that, right? Like they're in the between 12 and 15 a game range, depending on uh, how many G League players are playing on their team. Got it. The next one, Memphis Grizzlies, who also play the Clippers and Lakers this weekend. And in fact, they do it back-to-back. Saturday and Sunday. Saturday versus the Clippers, Sunday versus the Lakers. Wow, we're keeping this real local. Keeping this real local. All right. So I like these two games because these teams are in L.A. for a weekend. It's just kind of fun. So the Grizzlies are are here this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Ja Morant Mm -hmm. is going to hit under four and a half three-pointers made in those two games. So four, Okay. you don't win. If he hits five or more, you win. Okay. Over the two games. Okay. And we've seen he's had nights where he's hit one. He's had uh, his career high the other night, which I think was six or seven. Yeah. Then my last one, and that's plus 350 odds. So I'm giving you pretty good odds on that one. And the last one here, which I just is so juicy. (laughs) I love this one. And I'm giving you the best odds on this one. Plus 575. So you put down $100, you win 575 back. This is the one. This is juicy. But there's a reason why it's juicy. It's going to be Celtics versus Knicks on Saturday. RJ Barrett is going to out rebound, assist, steal, and block Jalen Brown in that game. That's wow. the bet. So he's oh wow. He so will point, beat him essentially. Points are off the table. Points are off the table. He will essentially beat him in every box score category besides points. RJ Barrett over Jalen Brown. 
Okay. All right. Let's break some money. Okay. Out let's here. break some money. I got a hundred alternate dollars to spend. I'm going to put $30 on RJ Barrett getting more rebounds. It's the value play. Assists, steals, and blocks. I love it. I love this bet. Yeah. 30 this bucks. is the bet that I would be leaning towards the most. Yeah. I love this one. So I'm putting 30 bucks there. I got 70 more alternate yeah. dollars to spend. Yeah. I'm putting 50 bucks on the Atlanta Hawks. Oh, you love that bet. I love it. I do. The only thing that makes me nervous here is they're in LA Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That LA flu could catch them real bad on Sunday. Yeah. That's because LA, we've the bars are not shut down. Life has not shut down here. Do we know if Sunday uh versus the Clippers is that a is that a classic twelve thirty it might be a Clippers afternoon tip off game? Uh I'm not sure. Either way I I, I kind of Think with with how is. injured the Clippers yeah. are right now, I'm not the most confident in their perimeter defense. Mm-hmm. So that's giving me some hope there. Yeah. Plus, even if it isn't a nooner, they're from Atlanta. They already have the time advantage <laughs> on that <laughs> sure. on that nooner. So sure. so I'm 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 putting fifty on that, and that leaves me with twenty dollars to put Jaw making under four and a half three pointers combined for his weekend back to back. All right. Well, we're going to go through these over the weekend, and then uh, next week we'll come back and see how you did. Beautiful. Oh, I'm excited. I can't wait. I can't wait till I'm I'm already catching the bug. It's already a problem. You've already spent the money in your mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm making it real dollars <laughs> next time. All right. That's good. I can't wait to see what I make. Well, that's all we got for you today. Yep. We hope everybody has a really fun weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. Remember, like, subscribe. Let us know in the comments where you put your alternate dollars. I want to yeah. know where I, I want to know where yeah, everybody's. Which of these bets do you like? Tell me how insane some of these lines are that I created. Yeah, yeah. Let's make some money together. I want to see where everybody's spending their money this week. Great. Everybody have a great weekend. Thank you so much. Clayton, what are we leaving everybody with? All right, we're going to leave you with White Stains, a band from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And the song is called Stomp On Me. Okay. And it's from their 2020 Make Me Sick EP. Good luck finding it on vinyl, but it's really (laughs) freaking good. Okay, awesome. Thank you, everybody. Bye.